Listen, everybody, to the words I have to say. Better get ready, because the Lord is coming one day. Welcome to the Prophet Daniel's Report. This is report number 179. My name is Daniel White the Third, here to remind you that Jesus Christ is coming back soon and that you need to be prepared. This broadcast is not about predictions, uh, nor is it about setting dates as some foolishly have. However, it is all about preparation. First today, let's look at some signs of his coming in the news. The disciples asked Jesus in Matthew 24, 3, What shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Jesus Christ then went on to give them and us clear signs that show us when we can begin to expect to see the coming of the Lord and the end of the world. Looking at world events through the lens of the Word of God, let's look at some headlines from today's news that point to the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. First up, Egypt and Israel are now working together to clear the Sinai of terrorists. According to Reuters, Egypt and Israel are coordinating on Cairo's biggest security sweep in decades against militants in the Sinai, in which 32 people have been killed. Israel fears Islamist militants possibly linked to al-Qaeda have gained a foothold in the Sinai border area since the overthrow of Hosni Mubarak, the last pharaoh. After initial Israeli pressure, the Egyptian military is replacing some of its heavy tanks in Sinai with in the Sinai with light armored vehicles. Secondly, today Iranian pastor Yusef Nadakani is freed from prison, according to Fox News. Pastor Nadakani, who was originally sentenced to death in his native country of Iran for his Christian faith, was acquitted of apostasy charges and released from custody. He had been jailed for three years and was awaiting execution, but this past weekend his charges were lowered to evangelizing Muslims, which carried a three-year sentence, and of course he was released with time served. We give God the glory, praise, and honor, and we thank the Lord for hearing and answering the prayers of thousands for this dear brother. May God bless him and his family today. Thirdly, experts warn of a perfect storm facing the global economy. According to the Associated Press, experts and leaders gathered in Italy may disagree on the cure, uh, but the disease seems clear. The world economy faces a perfect storm of risks that include prolonged crisis in a structurally flawed Europe, political paralysis pushing America off a fiscal cliff, a slowdown in the emerging emerging economies drying up the last of the global growth and the spectacularly destabilizing prospect of war over Iran's nuclear program. Economist Nouriel Rubini predicted years of gloom almost regardless of what is decided at this point. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says in Mark thirteen eight, For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be earthquakes in divers places, and there shall be famines and troubles. These are the beginnings of sorrows. 
You can read these stories in more detail and get more Second Coming related news on our website at secondcomingherald.com. Now, beloved, it is time for Prophecy Boot Camp. Prophecy Boot Camp is where we deal with the basics of prophecy, the second coming of Christ, and what will happen in the future according to the Word of God, the Bible. Our aim here is not to make predictions, but to help you get prepared by understanding how things will unfold in the end times. Our topic for today is titled, Daniel's Dream, Part 5, from Dr. John MacArthur's book, The Second Coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. The final phase of the revived Roman kingdom is the destruction of the ten-nation confederacy. Daniel chapter 7, verses 26 and 27 says, But the judgment shall sit, and they shall take away his dominion to consume and to destroy it unto the end. And the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominions shall serve and obey him. The ten-nation confederacy is going to be extremely powerful. Daniel chapter 7 verse 23 says, The fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth, which shall be diverse from all kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth, and shall tread it down, and break it in pieces. Revelation 13.7 gives a similar indication of power. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints, and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds, and tongues, and nations. This confederacy will sometime in the future rule the world and out of that system is going to rise a man Satan's man what he is and what he does will be the topic of our next broadcast if the Lord should tarry his coming and we live now beloved in closing let's consider what God wants you and I to do in light of his second coming Jesus Christ is said in Luke 19.13 to occupy till I come. God does not want us to engage in foolish date setting and speculation regarding the time of the rapture or the second coming. He simply wants us to be ready. In light of that, please listen to the following from Dr. John Ankerberg of the Ankerberg Theological Research Institute. Today's topic is titled, Why It is Wrong for Christians to Predict When Christ Will Return to Earth, Part 3. The knowledge of fulfilled prophecy and the sure knowledge of Christ's eventual return should be of great comfort to Christians. But the question is not so much whether we should be ready to meet God at such and such a date in the future, but are we ready to meet him right now? Death can overtake any one of us at any moment. Whenever Christ returns, his people must be ready for him. Those who have lived godly lives and expressed a devoted sacrificial concern for Christ's interests will be rewarded at his coming. Those who have lived for worldly pleasures and themselves only will not. They will be saved, yet so as by fire. The real purpose of knowledge about Christ's coming is not knowing a specific date, but the encouragement to live godly in this life so that we won't be ashamed when Christ does return. Holy Father God, thank you so much for your holy word. Thank you, Lord, for showing us that your Holy Word is being fulfilled. Thank you, Lord, for showing us 
uh, what is happening and what will happen. And thank you, Lord, for giving us something to do while we wait on you. Lord, for Jesus Christ's sake, please forgive us of our sins, of not being what we should be. Lord, fill us with your Holy Spirit to be the witnesses that we ought to be in these last days. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake. Amen. Now, dear friend, if you are listening to this broadcast and you do not know Jesus Christ as your Savior, God wants you to receive Jesus Christ before he returns. Please understand with me that you are a sinner and that you have broken God's laws. The Bible says in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned, every last one of us have come short of the glory of God. Please also understand with me that because of your sins you deserve eternal punishment in hell. Romans 6.23 says the wages of sin is death. This is both physical death and spiritual death in hell. Now, that is the bad news. But here is the good news. John 3.16 reads, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. This verse is telling us that despite our sinfulness, God loved us so much that he sent his Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer and die on the cross for your sins and mine. As he died on the cross, he was buried and rose again. Now all you have to do is believe in him, trust in him, and have faith in him for your salvation. If you do so, you will not suffer eternal punishment in hell, but you will live eternally in heaven with God. The Bible also says in Romans 10, 9, and 13 that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Saved from what? Saved from hell. Now, dear friend, if you are willing, dear friend, if you are willing to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ for your salvation, please pray with me this simple prayer and mean it from your heart. Heavenly Father, I realize that I am a sinner and that I have done some bad things in my life. For Jesus Christ's sake, please forgive me of all of my sins. I now believe with all of my heart that Jesus Christ died for me, was buried, and rose again. Lord Jesus, please come into my heart and save my soul and change my life today and forever. Amen. Dear friend, if you just trusted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and you prayed that prayer and meant it from your heart, I desire, I declare to you that based upon the Word of God, you are now saved from hell and you are on your way to heaven. Welcome to the family of God and congratulations on doing the most important thing in life and that is receiving Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. For more information to help you grow in your newfound faith in Christ, go to GospelLightSociety.com and read what to do after you enter through the door. Now remember the words of the Lord Jesus Christ, beloved, in Matthew 24:42. Watch therefore, for you know not what hour your Lord doeth come. Matthew 24:44 says, Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man cometh. Keep looking up, for your redemption draweth nigh. Let us join in the prayer of John the Revelator. Even so come, Lord Jesus. God bless you. Listen, everybody, to the words I have to say. Better get ready. The Lord is coming one day.